Hey everybody, welcome back to ReviewEcon.com. I'm Jacob Breed and we're gonna go over another free response question today. This time we're going over the 2012 macroeconomics exam question number three. This one connects to unit three from the course exam description about national income and price determination. Let's get on with the question. Let's do it. It's go time. So this question starts off with Anderson land. They have full employment and they are in long run equilibrium. We have to draw out an ASAD model for the given scenario. Start off by having your axes labeled with real GDP on your X axis and price level on your Y axis. Draw in a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, upward sloping aggregate supply curve, short run that is, and a vertical long run aggregate supply curve at the intersection between the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve. That intersection where all three curves line up like that, that indicates long run equilibrium and full employment. Right underneath your long run aggregate supply curve there, you need to have Y1 labeled. That is your full employment output. You also need to mark your price level, PL1. That is found at the intersection between the downward sloping aggregate demand curve and that upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. Part B has us assume that Anderson Land is experiencing an increase in exports. We have to show that change on the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model here. An increase in exports is going to shift that aggregate demand curve. And the reason why is because aggregate demand shifters are anything that is part of the output expenditure model of the formula for GDP. C is consumption, IG is gross investment, G is government purchases, and XN is net exports, which is exports minus imports. Since exports are increasing, that is going to cause net exports to increase. And with that, we're going to see aggregate demand shift to the right. Draw in that shift to the right. And then with that, you need to show an increase in the new price level at PL2 and an increase in real output, also called real income or real GDP at Y2. Draw that shift in, indicate the price level change and the real output change, and you got your points here. Part C is a little bit tricky. In the last part, we saw an increase in the price level. Based on that increase in the price level, what happened to real wages? A lot of people get tripped up on this question because they see that national income increased. National income is not the same thing as wages. Wages are what workers are paid. National income includes all sorts of other things, including entrepreneurial income and corporate income and business income. So we need to find out what happened to wages specifically here. And if you remember, wages are inflexible in the short run. That means in the short run, nominal wages are not going to change. To calculate the change in real wages, we need to take the nominal change, which is zero, minus the inflation rate, and we do have some level of inflation because the price level increased in part B, and that equals the real change. In this case, it's a negative real change. Zero minus some positive number will equal a negative number. In order to answer this question completely, you need to say that real wages fall, and then follow it up with because, that's the explain point that is asked for here, the price level increased, and wages do not change in the short run. If you want to reference that formula that we just saw, that would be even better. And that's how you get the point. Question D has two parts to it. Here, Anderson Land businesses are increasing their purchases of capital equipment. That's container ships and other equipment. What part of the aggregate demand curve is actually impacted here? As I mentioned before, it's C, consumption, IG, gross investment, G, government purchases, and XN, which is exports minus imports or net exports. The component here that is actually changing is gross investment. Business purchases of capital equipment is counted in gross investment. Section two asks us to identify what will happen to the long run aggregate supply curve and to explain. Long run aggregate supply is going to shift to the right. And the reason why is because we have new purchases of capital equipment. That new purchase of capital equipment is going to increase the potential GDP for this economy. In the long run, this economy will produce more 
output at any price level. That means the long run aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the right. And the explain point here is because there is an increase in the capital stock, stock as in stockpile. The amount of capital Anderson Landau has is greater and that increases the potential GDP. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, make sure you head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the total review packet with everything you need to know for the AP Microeconomics and Macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.